Hi guys, and welcome to the first SoccerNet tutorial of the year uh, that will be related to our SoccerNet 2022 challenges. So my name is Anthony Chopa, and I am a postdoc researcher at the University of Liège in Belgium, and I'm one of the organizers of the SoccerNet challenges. And today I will be your host with Silvio uh, for today's session. So I'm so glad that many of you were able to join. I know that it's not always easy depending on where you live and might be very early or very late. Um, and I've also seen that our Discord server has had a lot of activity lately uh, with new participants coming almost daily. So thank you for that. And if I haven't told you so already, welcome to the Soconet community. So in these tutorials, we hope that you will learn uh, many things on our data set and its associated task. And it will actually help you to actively participate in this year's challenges. So what can you expect from these tutorials? Well, we will basically give you all the information regarding the data, the metrics, and the tasks that you need to tackle. To go even further, uh, we will cover the baselines that we provide, as well as some demo code in Python uh, to get you started easily. And Finally, we will give you the first update on the current leaderboard so that you will have an idea of where you are standing at the moment if you already participated. Um, this will be also your chance to ask questions and to discuss ideas together. All right, so let's dive in to the program for the next two days. As you can see, we divided the tutorials in six slots of one hour each. Um, the actual presentations will be shorter than an hour uh, so that we will leave time for Q&A and coffee breaks between each session. All presentations are recorded and will be available on replay in the next few days, I hope, uh, on our YouTube channel that is called ACAD Research. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, of course. Um, and just note that we won't include the discussions and the Q&As to respect everyone's privacy in the replay. So don't be shy and feel free to ask anything. Uh, this will be deleted uh, from the recorded uh, session right after. So as you can see, we will be starting with a general introduction uh, for which I will detail the exact program right after. Then we will have uh, Silvio Giancola, who is a research scientist at KAUST, so King Abdullah University of Science and Technology that's in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, he will present the action spotting and the replay grounding tasks that were already there last year and that are also part of this year's challenges. He will review the tips and tricks that the previous winners used uh, so that you can improve on them. Next, uh, we will end today's session with Florian Majera, uh, who is a PhD candidate at the University of Liège, so the same university uh, than me. And she's also an innovation engineer at uh, EVS Broadcast Equipment. Uh, that's a famous company uh, in uh, sports broadcasting. She will present uh, our new camera calibration and pitch localization task. And she will show you how to uh, download the new data that is associated with this task, as well as how to get started with the baselines that she uh, provides. So tomorrow, uh, we will start the tutorials with Vladimir Sommers, uh, who is in this talk. He's a researcher from UC Louvain in Belgium, uh, EPFL in Switzerland, and he's also working at SportRadar, a uh, sports company. He will present the new player re-identification task that has a very different data format compared to the other SoccerNet challenges. Following that, we will have Baidu Research, who will present our latest task, which is player tracking. Uh, we launched this new task and the associated data very recently. And actually, uh, we also recently got the uh, paper accepted to the CV Sports Workshop so that will be at CVPR and the subjects. Uh, it's already available on archive uh, for those of you who are interested and maybe we can share the link uh, in, the, in the chat. So finally, uh, we will draw some conclusion and highlight some of the take home messages and we will leave some time for further Q and A's and uh, panel discussion. So let's start with the general introduction of Soconet, so the topic of this talk. We will um, talk a bit about the general information regarding the challenge that you should know, uh, so just what you need to do to be eligible for the prize. Then we will do a small recap of the history of Soconet up to uh, what is Soconet actually today. 
especially with all the novelties we introduced this year, it's, it's easy to get confused. So I will also give a brief overview of the task that we proposed this year so that you know which upcoming session you might be interested in and attend them. And I will end the talk with some practical information uh, by answering a few common questions that we already received. So let's first dive in to the important information regarding the challenges um, this year. First, if you're not already aware of it, uh, but I doubt it, we propose four different challenges uh, that are split into six tasks and coordinated by five teams um, that are scattered all around the world. The um, second challenges are really a great opportunity for you to discover our data set and tasks while benchmarking your solution uh, with others. And this year, we found three sponsors instead of one. So we have Sport Radar, EVS Broadcast Equipment, and Baidu Research that propose a total price of $4,000, so which is great. So thank you very much to them for backing up the, this project and you will get a chance to hear from them uh, in the next sessions. So all our data and baselines are actually open source. So feel free to just pick one or several tasks and start by trying the baselines that we provide. Then you can either adapt our methods or come up with a totally new one and try to reach the top of the leaderboard. The deadlines to submit all your results on our Eval AI servers is on the 30th of May, 2022 at uh, 11.59 PM uh, Pacific time. So don't forget to add it to your agenda, not to make some late submissions because otherwise the servers will be down. Um, now, regarding the venue, all of our challenges will be features at workshops during the CVPR conference that's happening in June of this year. So if you're working in computer vision or AI, I'm sure you've already heard of this conference since it's the biggest one. And actually it is not only the biggest like in uh, artificial intelligence and stuff, but it's almost the fourth most influential venue uh, according to Google Scholar metrics uh, across all scientific domains. So at the moment it's nature that is first, but uh, Maybe we can try to dethrone it in a few years. I don't know. So um, action spotting, replay grounding, re-ID, and tracking will be featured at the ActivityNet workshop. So this is a workshop that is centered on video understanding. Um, so it can be general video understanding. And here we are presented as guest tasks uh, for the particular case of soccer. And we also have camera calibration uh, that will be uh, at uh, CV Sports Workshop, uh, which is a workshop that is much more focused on sports. So we will have a talk at those sessions to present the winners of the challenge and even give them a chance to give a small talk. But don't worry if you cannot attend in person, um, like if you're winning, um, a short video will be just fine. We just still need to figure out the details. So um, for the winners, as I said, uh, there will be some cash price um, that are split uh, just like it's shown in the table. So we have two times $500 for the camera calibration and pitch localization task that is sponsored by EVS Broadcast Equipment. So that's $100 in total. Also, we have two times $500 uh, for action spotting and replay grounding that this year are offered by Sport Radar. And also another $1,000 that is also offered by Sport Radar for the player re-identification task. And finally, we have $1,000 for player tracking, which is sponsored by Baidu Research. But besides the money price, it is also a great visibility for your work uh, to be ranked very high in the leaderboard. Actually, this year, uh, we will most probably uh, write a paper that will be summarizing uh, the proposed method, basically a summary of how the challenge went. Uh, and we will show all the leaderboards uh, and, uh, and cite uh, your research um, for this year. So researchers in the future, I mean, like will be able to cite uh, your paper as well. So how to participate to the challenge now? Basically, uh, anyone 
that does not have access to the print truth data can access the challenge. So for instance, the organizers who uh, have access to the print truth data cannot participate. But otherwise, it doesn't matter for you if you're working in academia, the industry, if you're a student, or if you're simply passionate about AI, anyone is welcome to participate. It's of course better if you form a team with your colleagues or your friends, uh, because usually the best ideas come in groups. But uh, if you feel like you can win on your own, then uh, just go for it. Um, each team or participant can actually compete on all tasks. So you can really try to win them all if you want. Um, now to be eligible for the prize, we require that each team write a short technical report. I will give a few details right after, um, but this, this is basically just for us to make sure that uh, the team did not cheat and that the proposed method actually makes sense. Now, let's assume that you're the great winner of one of the tasks. Uh, you will be asked to do a presentation at the workshop. We don't have the details yet, but it will be between one and five minutes. And as I said, it doesn't have to be in person, uh, like if you did not plan to travel to CVPR, uh, because otherwise it would be very short notice. Um, so probably a video will be fine, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll check all the details later. Also, um, don't forget that each challenge has some specific rules that are available on the GitHub repository. So make sure to check them uh, to not be disqualified for a silly mistake. Um, Anyway, if you have any question regarding those rules, uh, don't hesitate to contact the task coordinator and I'm sure they will be very happy to answer your question. So now for the technical report, uh, we ask you to write a short report that is between two and four pages, uh, depending on the challenge, that basically explains your method. You don't have to include uh, an introduction, uh, reference, uh, related work, you know, like a usual paper. Uh, it's just so that we understand what you did to achieve your results. So don't hesitate also to include figures or tables uh, to be more visual. Um, and this will ease our reading, of course. And try to be really accurate about how you load the data, uh, how you construct your network ar architecture if you're working with a network, which training parameter you are using and so on. So these are really the important details. So now, if possible, you may join code to your submission. So any extra material like also video or anything is accepted. Um, but we know that for companies, it's, it's often difficult to share code. So that's why it's not mandatory to do so, but like if you can, uh, it's always better. We uh, won't publish anything you send us uh, and it won't be distributed to third parties outside of the evaluation committee of, um, of the task. So afterward, you're totally free to publish it anywhere you want, even on archive. Uh, we suggest you the MM Sports Workshop that will be at the ACMM conference in Lisbon, uh, which is in October. And the deadline for submitting the paper is on the 4th of July. So now let's see a bit the planning for the next uh, few weeks. So we've separated the plan between what you have to do and what we have to do. So up until the deadline at the end of May, uh, we don't have to do anything, but you are working. You will basically need to make the submissions to the different challenges. Then you will have one week to write the technical report according to the guideline that I just gave you. So remember, it doesn't have to be like paper proof ready uh, with uh, very nice sentences and stuff, just, just the basic stuff uh, so that we understand. The following week, we will take a few days ourselves to review the reports and we will check the results. And finally, on June 10th, we will contact the winners so that they have approximately one week uh, to prepare a small talk or a video, depending on whether or not they are attending CDPR. Then uh, it will be time to officially present the winners and their solution and what of the workshops at CVPR. So on June 19, it will be the Activity Net workshop. So for action spotting, replay grounding, re-ID, and tracking. And on June 20, it will be CV sports, so for uh, camera calibration and pitch localization. 
anyway, most of us will actually be at the conference. Uh, so don't hesitate to come say hi during the workshop and tell us if you want to grab a drink after the conference. It would be great to actually meet you in person and connect. So now that you've got all the important information on how to participate, let's review a bit the origins of our Socanet dataset and the novelties that we introduced this year. So Socanet was first introduced by Silvio Giancola, who is here today, uh, in 2018 at the CV Sports Workshop. And that's actually where and how we met him. So he basically crawled the web to retrieve 500 broadcast game of soccer. And he designed a pretty ingenious process to annotate all goals, cards, and substitutions. Basically, what he did was to retrieve those information about the games automatically on the web. You know some famous websites. I'm not going to cite them. Um, and all of these at a one minute precision. Then he manually refined those annotations to have a one second precision for all those events. So this accounted for more than 6,000 uh, 6, events that were spread across almost 800 hours of videos. So in the same paper, introduce the first task of Soccernet, which is action spotting. And the goal of this task is to retrieve the main events, so goal cards and substitutions, in the whole untrained video. That was really quite complex, uh, since those events are very scattered in the long videos. And if you're interested in action spotting, you've maybe seen our baseline that is called CALF, C-A-L-F, uh, that was actually developed first on this uh, version of Soccernet. Well, then. These three types of events were a bit light, let's say, for a complete analysis of soccer. So in 2020, we decided to collaborate together and to fund a large annotation campaign with so both of our universities and Alborg University in Denmark to annotate actually all events occurring in the soccer games among 17 classes. We also decided to annotate all camera types and transitions as well as information about the replays. So in total, we went from 6,000 annotations to 300,000 annotations, all manually annotated by students of the University of Liège. And don't worry, they were well paid under the bench of the law. They did not do it for free. And thanks to this data, uh, we were actually able to propose three tasks. Um, obviously, we kept the action spotting task, but that instead of having three classes now has 17. But we also introduced a camera shot segmentation and boundary detection task that basically aims at separating the different camera shots among 13 classes. So for instance, this is the main camera that is showing. This is a close up of a player and many more. This task was particularly useful for people working in automatic video production, but we decided not to make a challenge out of it. And the final task, is a completely novel one uh, that we call replay grounding. And that basically aims at retrieving the moment of an action that is shown in a replay. But I will give you more details later on and Silvio will complement on that. So last year, uh, we proposed two challenges at the Activity Net Workshop at CVPR. That unfortunately was fully virtual, so we weren't able to meet people. Um, but we proposed two tasks, and at Second Spectrum, as our sponsor, we gave two times $500 prize for the winners. So in total last year, um, this is just some number, but we, we received around 137 submissions on our evaluation server that you will see uh, we are much higher already this year. So for um, action spotting, the winners were actually by the research. Uh, with their Vitpress Sport group, followed by Oppo Research Institute and the AI Image Lab. For the replay grounding task, um, the podium was essentially the same with Baidu and Oppo sharing the first two spots and the third uh, at another winner. So I don't know if you've noticed, but this is the Baidu research team that is actually working with us this year on the tracking challenge. And that's actually where we met them last year. So that was in the past, but what's Soconet today? If I would have to define it, I would say that it's an international effort to drive AI in sports. We provide public data 
and baselines that anyone can push uh, for their own research. We are also slowly trying to build a community of researchers in the field so that we can help people get in touch and create fruitful collaborations. This is the goal of the Discord channel that we have. And finally, we are organizing challenges to produce a common benchmark for the most recent methods. To the best of our knowledge, um, we propose the largest data set that is related to soccer, both in terms of data and number of tasks, and probably annotations too. For you, this means that you can compare your method on public benchmarks and show the world how good you are on our yearly challenges, right? So in the future, uh, we hope to continue this effort with uh, new data, new tasks, and new collaborators. Speaking about that, um, I guess it's time for you to meet our team officially. So we are three main organizers, uh, Adrien de Liège, Silvio Giancola, and myself from the University of Liège in Belgium and Kaust in Saudi Arabia. And we have our two supervisors that are Marc van Roggenbroek and Bernard Ganem. Uh, we are mainly in charge of the organizational matters, as well as everything related to the data and the action spotting and replay ground. Next, we have the Denmark team with uh, Maysam, Jacob, Kemal, and Thomas Moslun that were in charge of last year's uh, replay grounding challenge and the camera shot uh, segmentation task. This year, uh, we welcomed Vladimir Summers. So he's from UC Louvain EPFL and Sport Radar, and he's a coordinator of the new uh, player re identification task. We also have Florian Majera and Olivier Barniche from Uliage and EVS Broadcast Equipment, who are in charge of the calibration tasks. And finally, our last year's winners by the research with Shinzu, uh, Li Kang, and Xiu Cheng, who are the coordinators of the player tracking task. As you can see, we are getting more and more international uh, with also companies that are transiting us right now, uh, like EVS, Portradar, and, uh, and Baidu Research. So, Let's take just a look at a few statistics now. On the community side, we doubled the number of people on our Discord server since last year. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are actually getting like new people almost every day. This is great. We also uh, have had more than 8,000 8, uh, views on YouTube that are related to SoccerNet. And right now, 314 submissions so far on Naval AI. Um, on our website, we've registered more than 22,000 visits from 162 countries from around the world. That's almost every country in the world. Uh, it's a, I think the total number is around 190 something. So as you can see, uh, we have a very large cluster around Europe, but also North America with Canada uh, and the East and West Coast of, uh, of the USA. We also have a lot of visits from Asia, especially India, Japan, and China. But we also have a higher interest recently uh, from uh, South America and Africa, which is great. So welcome uh, from, to anyone around the world. So the website has been completely redesigned lately. So if you haven't checked it, um, don't hesitate to take a look. It's called www.soccer-net.org. Unfortunately, SoccerNet in one word was already taken. So <laughs> let's see a bit um, the novelties of this year now. So we'll start with the data. As a, as a quick reminder, in 2018, in the first version of SoccerNet, we had 500 complete soccer, soccer uh, games from broadcast videos. Um, that was about 800 hours of videos. And last year, we introduced 50 extra games for the action spotting and replay grounding challenge sets. So we wanted to have these games that were completely separated uh, from what was available before so that uh, all the ground truth data is uh, segregated and uh, private and that no one can cheat on the challenge. Um, all these games are taken from the major European leagues um, starting in 2014 up to 2020 for some of the most recent uh, games uh, that are in the challenge set. And for all these broadcast games, all events and replays are actually annotated. So after last year's challenges, it was end of June, uh, we were thinking about the possible directions that we could take for a socket. And we figured out that 
we had access to temporal information with the events, but that we did not have some spatial annotations. So what we first decided to do was to extract frames from the broadcast videos, and then we chose them to be around interesting events that we annotated. So for instance, around goals, uh, penalties, uh, free kicks, and so on. And we wanted to have the most important actions in the way that um, in the way that these are the actions that are shown in a replay at some point. So for that, uh, we simply looked at all the replays that we had, which action they pointed at, and we extracted the frame. Then um, what we did was to extract the same moment in the action, uh, the, such than the one that we had in the replay. Uh, this is to simulate somehow a multi-camera setup since the replays usually shows the same action, but under a different viewpoint. And this amounted to around 33,000 or something frames um, with at least one pair of frame showing the same moment in time, but from different cameras. And on that, we've annotated some special information that I will detail right after. Finally, we received out of the blue, 12 complete games from the Switzerland championship that were only taken from the main camera. So this data is not completely available yet, uh, but we plan on releasing it in the next few months. And we will show you what we've done with it. So first with the frames, as I said, the first thing was uh, to extract the same moment in the replays, then the action frames to simulate somehow a multi-camera setup. From there, uh, we annotated first all lines on the field, so 20 different classes. And we also annotated the goal posts and the crossbar in the goal. Then uh, we annotated all bounding boxes for the players, the goalkeepers, the referees, the ball, the staff, and many, many other classes, such as uh, yellow cards, uh, when the referee shows it, so like, like that, or uh, the wall of player. We then annotated all correspondences between the action frames and its replays for all bonding boxes. And we also added some extra information such as the jersey numbers uh, when they were visible in at least one of the frames. So these annotations were also done by 20 undergrad students uh, at our university uh, who worked for more than two months in the summer in last summer. Um, so here you can see a summary of the different um, annotations that we have so far in SoccerNet. And in total, our frame-based annotation correspond to more than 1 million its instances, which is absolutely huge. Um, I'm also providing here some different stats for the annotated classes. And after the talk, feel free to pause here uh, on the information to have a, a deeper look. Um, this data is already available for download. I'm sure you've seen it on our PEEP package, but uh, the paper is actually not available yet because it is under review uh, and it contains much more information and we hope that it will soon be accepted so that we can share it with you. So now let's get back to the 12 complete games from the main camera. So what we first did was to annotate all events, just like we did for the broadcast games so that we were able to extract some 30 second clips around uh, interesting events. And we also kept a whole 45 minutes half time uh, to annotate important information. So on these, since there are no cuts uh, in these videos, unlike for broadcast, we were able to annotate all bonding boxes for players, ball, referees, and staff that are inside the field. And each bounding box is associated with a uni unique uh, tracklet ID and a team tag, and also a jersey number when it is available. All annotations are done at 25, 25 yeah, frames per second on full HD videos. And for these annotations, we relied on Super Annotate, uh, which is an online annotation platform. So this is not sponsored, but we are very happy with the work that they've done. And um, we provided those tracking in, uh, annotations, so for the 230 second clips, but also for the long 45 minute videos. Uh, but this uh, will be released in a future challenge, uh, so not for now. So 
Now that you know a bit about the new data that we provide this year, let's have just a quick overview of the different tasks uh, that we propose. So these will be details in the next sessions uh, of these tutorials, but it's always nice to have a wide view uh, so that you know which session to attend. So let's start uh, with the first one. So this is uh, action spotting. So this task is very interesting to understand important moments in a broadcast soccer game. So it consists in localizing when and which soccer actions occur. So in our data set among 17 different classes that include penalties, kickoffs, goals, substitutions, offside, and many more. And each annotation uh, is actually a single timestamp, which makes the annotation quite scattered. So the data is consists in 550 videos, so 500 for train test and validation, and 54 challenge uh, from broadcast soccer games that are available at two resolutions, so 720p and 224p. Uh, uh, and we also provide frames extract, uh, extracted features at two frames per second, including the features used by the 2021 uh, winners. So traditionally, uh, we use the average mean average precision, very complicated metric uh, that was defined in the original paper. Um, but this year, we introduced the tight average mean average precision, which is basically the same metric, but with a smaller uh, temporal tolerance. But Silvio will give you all the details about that. So next, we have uh, replay grounding, which consists in retrieving the timestamp of an action shown in a given replay shot within the whole game. So this is uh, showing somehow the importance of an action, since if it is replayed several times, probably means that it had an impact on the game. So for instance, this task is very useful if you're doing automatic highlight uh, production. So here, uh, it relies on the same data than for action spotting, so the same 550 games uh, with all the same provided features. But uh, unlike action spotting, here in replay grounding, we don't take the class into account. So it can be like any uh, action, and uh, we don't make uh, any uh, uh, discrimination on that. So regarding the new task, we first have uh, two tasks related to camera calibration. Uh, so camera calibration is a very important task for uh, many interesting applications, such as offline uh, analysis, or integrating graphics into live productions. Uh, and so here we define two tasks. So the first one is soccer pitch uh, marking and goalpost localization. So this first task consists in detecting the extremities of every soccer pitch element uh, that are captured in the image. So a soccer pitch element, for instance, is a line or a goalpost bar. So from there, um, the data, it consists in uh, 22,000 images that are taken from the 33,000 soccer net frames. Uh, but we have to remove certain frames since some images uh, do not contain enough line to be calibrated. For the second task, uh, so automatic camera calibration, the camera parameters are used to estimate the reprojection error that is induced by the camera parameters. So the camera parameters are, for example, the lens parameters, the orientation, the translation, uh, but everything is defined accordingly. And Florian will give you much more information about that in our talk later. Then we have re-identification. So here the task uh, consists in uh, linking the, the bounding boxes of the players across multiple views. Uh, this is a key component for advanced highlight solutions, for instance, uh, such as customized videos that are focusing on a single player or for developing better tools to support uh, referees. So this uh, SoccerNet ID dataset is composed of 340, yeah, 340,000 uh, player thumbnails uh, that are extracted from the frames uh, that you've seen in SoccerNet V3. So here, once again, we don't take the class into account in the evaluation, but know that you have to detect the players, the goalkeeper, uh, the, the referees and the staff. So for the final task now, so from the 12th 
uh, game, we annotated all player tracklets. So this task is particularly useful uh, when you want to assess the performance of players separately. The true name of the, the task is called multiple object tracking or MOT, if you're familiar with it. So basically it's trying to recover all trajectories. So here we will consider the task in two steps. So the first step, which is associated to the challenges this year, is a pure association task. So we will give you the ground truth detections, and you will basically just need just to make the association between the bounding boxes across the different frames. For next year, we are planning on a more complete tracking task that will expect you that we will, where we will expect you to detect the objects and to make the association. So for this year, the data will consist of 100 video clips that have been separated into train and a challenge set uh, of 30 seconds each that are full HD. And the classes that you have to follow will be the players, the goalkeepers, the referees, the staff. So, so for instance, the medical staff that is uh, going on the, on the field to heal a player or uh, the ball. So if you're familiar with tracking, uh, we consider the HOTA as the main metric. This is very, a very interesting metric because it really uh, disentangles the detection metric and the association accuracy. So we have the DETA and the ESTA. So the coordinators for these stars uh, are, Baidu, are from uh, Baidu Research. So here's the final summary of the different tasks that we will have this year. Uh, I hope that you will find at least one that fits your research interests. And we will hope that we'll be able to keep on providing interesting content uh, for all of you in the coming years. So before we move on to the first Q&A and coffee break, I will go through some of the questions that we've uh, already received. So the first one is, will the best performing method uh, necessarily win? So the answer obviously is yes, but if the submission is valid. So if you've made like no manual annotations on the challenge set, uh, if your uh, report is sent on time, if your results are, or at least we think are reproducible, if there's uh, no cheating in any way, uh, no multiple count, for instance. The next question is, will we publish the technical reports? So no, the reports are just for internal evaluation only. You can then write a full paper. I will remind you of the MM Sports 2022 deadline in July, uh, on July 4th. Um, and as I said, we will most probably write a short paper summarizing the challenge. So if you provide a report, uh, your method will be featured on that report, uh, but as a citation. So some uh, of you who participated last year asked, why can't I see the other participants in the leaderboard, which was available last year? Well, this year we chose to keep the leaderboard private up until the end to keep more suspense, basically. Uh, however, we will provide uh, more regularly some updates on the new state of the leaderboard now that the challenge have actually started. Um, so these will be available in each of the sessions uh, in this tutorial, but also on Discord afterward uh, with written messages. So make sure to join us there if you want to get the latest news. Um, next question is, uh, what if you can't attend the session on June 19 and June 20? Uh, will the sessions we be recorded? So we're not sure yet uh, because we haven't received some the, the, these news uh, from the organizers. Uh, we still need to also receive the exact schedule to know uh, how much time we'll, we will have. But we will do our best so that everybody can watch at least a replay of the challenge session. So we will we, we'll try to make it work. Um, last question is, do you have to write a report if you know that you will not win? But one thing is uh, absolutely certain is that without a report, you cannot win anything. And also remember that even if someone is uh, above you, if like the submission is uh, uh, contains uh, cheating or uh, is not, uh, he's not eligible for the prize, you can always uh, go above. And by providing all, a report, you also have a better chance of being featured on the challenge report paper. Uh, and that will give extra visibility to your work. Now, uh, if you've got some other questions and remarks about the organization of the challenge, don't hesitate to ask them like right after this talk uh, or later on Discord, or you can use our 
work email addresses. Um, I'm sure you can find them easily on our published papers that are related to Soconet. <coughs> so if you want to know more, uh, we've made several videos related to Soconet on our YouTube channel. So feel free to just browse them and subscribe if you, if you enjoy what we do. Um, don't forget to check out our GitHub repository with all baseline codes for the task, as well as our pip package that can be very easily installed with a pip install Soconet. And it contains uh, very interesting functions to help you get started. Otherwise, you can find us on several social media, such as Twitter, Discord, and YouTube. And so now as a true conclusion, let's say, uh, I will ask you actually, which task will you tackle uh, when you leave here today? So let's talk about that. Thank you for attending.